Uh, I said revenue was the price demand equation times the number of items we sold, and then we distributed through. Oh, did I do the derivative? Oh, 0.4. I, you're right, you're right. I'm trying to go off memory here. Okay, that was it, right? Okay, my apologies. Okay, so that's my, that's my revenue. Now I need to subtract from that the cost. Now do we know the cost? Yeah, I, I gave that to you earlier. What was the cost? 2,000 plus 160x, right? Now, I need this in parentheses. Why do I need that in parentheses? Yep, I have to distribute that negative sign through. That's my profit function. So let's go ahead and distribute the negative through, clean things up. Any questions on what I'm doing? So distribute that negative through, and now let's collect like terms together, and we will have a final version of our profit function. And I'm going to, when I write my profit function down right now, I'm going to put it in descending order. So my profit is this, my profit is, um, I have negative 0.4x squared. How many x's do I have? So negative uh, 400 take away 160, so, right? 240. X, and then finally minus 2,000. This is our profit function. Positive 240. Oh, yeah, I don't know why I put minus. This is plus. 400x, take away 160x is 240x. Okay, now what? Find the derivative, number line, test points. Okay, our derivative, profit, um, let's write it p prime of x. The derivative is negative 0.8x plus 240, that's a nice derivative, isn't it? Now we set that to zero. So we set negative 0.8x plus 240 equals zero. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna move this to this side. <clears throat> so I get 240 equals positive 0.8x and then divide through. What's that, 300? <clears throat> Number line test points, right? Number line test points. Number line, 300 test points, like 200 and 400. Where do these numbers get plugged into? Where do these get plugged into? Derivative. To the derivative, into this. All right? Now, I'm not going to do it, but let's just, you'll trust me. That means this, this will turn out positive and this one will turn out negative. So it is going to be a, a maximum there. Is that all right if I don't plug those in? <clears throat> all right. What are, what are the results of this? We have what happening at 300? Maximum profit, right? So we have maximum profit at x equals 300 cameras. Have I answered the question? No. Because the question is saying, what should the price be to maximize profit? So now I need to figure out what the price is. The price should be P 
equals, what was it, 400? 400 minus 0.4x, which is 300. Right, our profit function was, or sorry, our price demand equation was this. So my price will be equal to this. I plug in 300, and what do you get? Hmm? 280? Y'all good with that? What was the answer to part A? How much? 200? So setting the camera price at 200 will bring in the maximum revenue stream, but it will not maximize our profits. Our profits are maximized if we set the price at 280. What's weird about that is that you're gonna bring in less money, right? If I set this price at 280, that's not gonna bring in as much money as setting it at 200. But when you factor in the costs, this will be the more efficient way to do it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a graph again because I think, I think it's best if it's, if it's visualized you mind getting the projector top left corner? And this time, let's kill, kill the lights. The top left one, yeah, right there. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna graph our revenue function, which was 400x. I know it'll come up in a second. Um, minus 0.4x squared. And then the cost function was negative 0.4x squared. What was profit? It was uh, plus 240x. Plus 1200. Sorry, I need your help. The profit function was negative 0.4x squared plus 240x minus 2000. And the revenue function was 400x minus 0.4x squared. Yes? OK. Now, let me. Yeah, 2,000 instead of 200. OK, I'll fix it. Zero. Something is not right. Our revenue function, what did we get as an answer for our revenue function? Where did the maximum occur? Yeah, oh, the price, yeah. But no, the number of items. 500, 500. OK, then this is right. All right. You all OK with this? Let me explain this graph. The red, the red is the revenue. The green is the profit, right? If we sell, if we sell 500 cameras, we will have the most revenue possible, right? And we will set the price for the camera at 300, right? But look at our profit when we sell 500 cameras. Our profit is this, right? Which is about, I don't know, a little under $20,000 profit. Instead of selling 500 cameras, if we sold 300, 
which means our price would be 280. So this right here, the price corresponding to that was 200. And then here, the price corresponding to that was 280. If we're willing to, to price it at 280, we're going to sell less cameras. But our profit will be maximized. And our revenue is not. But that doesn't matter. Profit at the end of the day is what you worry about, right? So we found the optimal solution right here. We need to price them at 280. I hope that makes sense, how that all works together. OK, um, I have five minutes. So um, any questions on that other problem that I asked you to go home with? You're at, can you turn the light back on and turn the projector off, please? Thank you. If you are okay with the problem I sent you home with and you don't, you're right, you want to turn it in, I'll collect it now. If you feel like you need the weekend with it, I'll give, I'll give you the weekend. However, the highest you can get on it will be a 90. So it's kind of like if you want it for the weekend, fine, but you get a 10-point penalty. What's that? Oh, wait, wait, we come back. Sorry, Thursday. I meant Thursday. I can't, I'm, I'm so ready for spring break. I, I, I'm like, let's go. No, on Thursday. So 10-point penalty, or you can turn it in now. Now, questions over it. I only have like four minutes. The derivative on it? Okay, so what was the function? It was like 16x. So was that the function right there? Yeah. And then the second, the first. Well, we did the first and second derivative, but after the second derivative, derivative, because mm -hmm. you send us home to find out and find the. Okay, so we already had the second derivative. Yeah. The second derivative. So what is the second derivative? Uh, Ninety-six. Uh, Ninety-six parentheses. X minus, X minus one squared. No, X minus one. So close parentheses. Plus 96 x open parentheses x minus 1 close parentheses. There's an x Am I missing something? Where? On this one right here? OK, so that, and then you were having trouble setting that equal to 0? Uh, setting that to 0, because we took out the 96 and then, and then setting it to 0. OK, so let me show you. On this step right here, this was the second derivative I guess I gave you in class, right? We got in class together. So when you look at these two terms, we see what they both have in common. They both have a 96, so I pull 96 out. They both have an x minus 1. So I pull an x minus 1 out. And then what I'm left with is what? If I pulled this 96 out and I pulled one of these out, what will I still have? Uh, an x minus 1. And then I pulled the 96 and the x minus 1 out, so I'm still left with an x there, so plus x here. Right? And I'm setting all that to 0. So now you have 96 times x minus 1. And then this right here is 2x minus 1. You just put those together. And then would we distribute the 96? Nope. Now you set each of these equal to 0. And so 96 doesn't even factor in. Because you can just divide it out. You set that to 0, you get 1. You set this to 0, you get 1 half. So you have two numbers. 1 half and 1, test, test, test. Does that make sense? Yeah, if you don't pull the x minus 1 out, this becomes a lot uglier to work with. OK, I've got to get to my other class. So I'll let you, uh, again, if you want to turn it in now, you can. You have another two or three minutes.